so welcome all. We're so glad to have you. Um, I expect that we'll have a few people join us in the next five or so minutes. So before Kim and I officially kick it off and give a real welcome, I just want to make a few notes about the technology and how today is going to work for those of you who are here. Uh, and then in five minutes, once we probably have more of quorum, we'll really dive in. So here's what you need to know. Um, first is uh, that this is going to be a mix of us uh, sharing things with you all, and then you all going into little groups and talking to each other. If you are willing to have your videos on while we talk with you in the large group, it makes the speaker's life way easier, especially if you emote. So for those of you who spend time on Zoom, there's a little reactions button in the bottom, and you can add hearts and thumbs up and clapping and such things. Strongly encourage you to do that and also to blow up the chat with things that you like, you're excited about, because this will make it more of a real interaction between us. Um, we'll be spotlighting people. And so, yes, Kim is demonstrating. Thank you, Kim. Um, we'll be spotlighting people as we go. And so you should be able to just watch and the right people will appear on your screen. But if you want to see it in another view, you can go up to the upper right hand corner and you've got view options. The other thing is we want to make this event as accessible as possible. So we've got uh, a transcription going on. And so if you go down to the bottom, you should see an option that says uh, CC for closed caption. And there's options underneath that, one of which is to show subtitles. And if you do that, it will miraculously transform what we say into words on your screen. You can also turn that off if you find that distracting. Um, the last note is you'll see some humans have stars. That does not mean that we are special in any way. We're just amazing humans like all of you. We're just going to be presenting at some point. So a human with a star just means they're going to be up on the, uh, the spotlight at some point, and it makes it easier for our tech team to find you and move you up uh, when we get to that point. So uh, we are up to 75 humans so far. It's very exciting. And we've got people from all over um, the US and Canada with us. Um, Kim, anything you want to say by way of high level intro before we jump into the official welcome? Nope, you've covered it all. Thanks, Justin. Okay. Just awesome. a big welcome. All right. So I think what we'll do then um, is I want to pass the floor to Kim to give us the welcome, but also to set the purpose and context. Kim is our courageous and amazing convener who brings us together to do this work. Obviously, it is the community, those of you on the call, who do the work. But Kim is the one who's brought us together through B-Lab to have these conversations. So, so grateful for the amazing work Kim puts into all this. And it is only fitting for Kim to be the one to kick us off. Aw, <laughs> thank you, Justin. Good morning, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, on behalf of B-Lab and the B Corp Climate Collective, welcome to the US and Canada regional event of the inaugural B Corp Global Climate Summit. How many of you got to, the chance to attend the global launch event? There were two of them yesterday. Um, raise your hand if you got a chance to, to attend one of those. They've been recorded and they're available on SCED and I think YouTube actually, um, so please, Get, if you haven't had a chance to see it, now would be or tonight would be a great time to see it to kind of put all of this into context. We're so glad you're here. Amazingly, there are over 5,000 attendees from over 100 countries that registered for the full global event. And of those, about 150 from Canada and about 700 from the United States. So thank you for joining us today. We know you have a lot of things on your plate and things that you could be doing today. We're so glad you're here. Um, again, please put in the chat your name, company, what US state or Canadian province you're from. Um, and I wanna start today with gratitude. Gratitude for this opportunity to come together, to learn from one another. Gratitude for the many leaders on this call who've been working hard to do their part as leaders, as individuals, and as business representatives to answer the call to fix our climate and to put people in justice first. And to the many leaders on the call today who've been at the heart of mobilizing the B Corp community to address the climate emergency. Gratitude to the amazing speakers who are joining us today. Gratitude for the hardworking event organizers, including the team that's running tech today and um, so much that's gone into today. 
to all of you for carving out the time to be with us today and for the incredible list of sponsors who've made this event and our work possible. You can see the full list of global sponsors. Hopefully you saw some of those sponsors as you were coming in, but hopefully there's a slide up. Um, and I especially wanna call out that there's a number of US and Canadian sponsors. These are companies who already are investing an amazing amount of volunteer time and um, just so, so many myriad ways that they're investing in this work and they're also investing in it financially. So I wanna especially call out and thank Deno North America, Dr. Bronner's Happily, the Business Development Bank of Canada, Tau Ski Valley, who you're gonna hear about a little later who really started this all, um, Participant Media, Conscious Capitalism Florida, Climate Positive, Mistella, Three Degrees, Pure Strategies, and Native Energy. So much gratitude for each of you, for the, for the representatives that are here today, you'll meet many of them, um, and for the work that your companies do to support uh, just zero carbon future. So folks, as a reminder, the purpose of our overall global gathering is to center climate justice, to really understand what it means for a business to put people and justice first in all of their climate action and their climate advocacy, whatever they're doing on climate, to remember, as Dr. Alonda Williams says, it's about the people, y'all. It's to build trust and community with one another, to share our knowledge and our resources with one another in this very hard work that we have to do to lean into our businesses doing our part to fix the climate. To catalyze action and build on the amazing momentum that hopefully you're feeling as part of this global summit um, and to equip each other for this journey to net zero with justice at the center. And specifically today, we're here to build on the work of the B Corp Climate Collective to date, which has been really enormous and there's much work to, to be done. And that's a, an incredible community of trust. If you're not already a member of the B Corp Climate Collective and you wanna get engaged, be a part of the action group, you can check out the Climate Collective website and uh, email us, we'll connect you with an action group that makes sense for you. We want to advance the collective work of, of B Corps to address climate change in a just and equitable way and really as a community to take the next step on that journey around climate justice together. So by the end of today, we hope you'll walk away energized, inspired, and really committed to concrete action. And as a community, we hope we're gonna walk away with a bevy of specific commitments from you as individuals and from your businesses for what you wanna start, stop, or continue doing in order to do your part to advance a just zero carbon future. So I'm gonna hand the mic over back over to my good friend and longtime partner in catalyzing this work. And if you, have, if you need a facilitator, the most extraordinary facilitator I've ever had the privilege of working with, Justin, Justin Wright. Thank you so much, Kim. So I wanna talk about the people. Kim, as you know, is our convener. I mentioned that earlier, very important. Um, I'm gonna be facilitating with my colleague, Kelsa. Now, Kelsa will be invisible. I mean, you can see Kelsa, but Kelsa will be invisible from the front of the room, other than a few moments where she'll present. But she's doing the chat facilitation, which is just as important and arguably more challenging than what I'm doing up here. So the two of us are the facilitation team for today. We have two amazing tech leads, with Elizabeth and Devin from Habitus, who are gonna be managing tech. Um, and then the other people who need appreciating are here with us. And there are two groups I want to name in particular. One is the actual working groups of the B Corp Climate Collective. You'll hear more about that in a minute, how that came to be. If you don't know what it is, this is a, a teaser and you'll hear about it in a second. But the commitments and the opportunity to act that we're going to have today is built on the shoulders of the work of the last several years of those teams. And I can't stress enough that what has made this group of people unique has been the work that's happened between gatherings. That has was what has made this truly special. So thank you to that, those humans who've been on the teams of the B Corp Climate Collective Working Groups, and then to the advisors, uh, many of whom are also on those teams, so you get double thanked. But this event is designed based on your input. You told us what you wanted, we designed it, you told us we hadn't quite gotten it right, we changed it, so we hope that this will reflect the reality of what's most useful to this movement right now. So let me tell you a little bit about what this is going to look like. As Kim said, this is situated in the flow of three days. We had a kickoff yesterday, regional gatherings today, and then tomorrow there's kind of open space free for all where anyone could propose something and there's amazing stuff. I mean, dozens and dozens of sessions. So if you see something you're interested in, please sign up and you'll find that information on SCED which should be in the chat and I'm sure has been in the chat many times already. 
For today specifically, the plan is as follows. We're gonna start with some context setting. We know many of the faces on this call are friends, collaborators, fellow justice warriors, but we also have new people, uh, new B Corps, new people who aren't B Corps or are mission driven businesses, and we are so glad you're here. This is the chance to come in and get involved and get committed. And so we want to start by setting some context. So you're not coming in overwhelmed, not sure how we got here, what's going on, because there is some history. So we'll start with some context setting. Then we're going to have a conversation about climate justice. How do we as businesses really center justice in our work on climate? And we have an amazing panel with leaders from organizations doing climate justice work who are going to give us some wisdom on that so we can listen, because that's our first step as businesses is to just find the people who really are expert and take some time and listen. Then we're going to hear about all of the work that has led to opportunities for concrete commitment. We had action parties last fall, and one of the key insights that came out is that there's just so much to do on climate and justice, it's really overwhelming. And so we've taken the work of the last two years building resources and toolkits um, and different things that we can use to choose to actually organize and distill. And this community has created a kind of a menu of action that will help you choose what's the right next step for you. So we'll talk through that so you're oriented. And then the last step is to actually make some commitments. We're gonna ask all of you to make one commitment. You can make more, but don't get too far out over your skis because over committing is a great way to get nothing done. Um, and we'll share what those are together and then celebrate uh, and close with some amazing music. So you'll wanna be there for that. So that's the meta flow. Two things to note are one, it would be insane to do a gathering of this duration without breaks. So there will be plentiful breaks throughout about every hour for at least 10 minutes because you would all lose your minds if we didn't do that. And please don't actually sign off Zoom for the break, just mute and silence yourself because otherwise we'll lose you from the breakout rooms. Why do I have breakout rooms? We're gonna put you with a group of four to five of your peers to actually talk and think this through together. In a meeting of over a hundred people, we can't have that discussion in the open room, but we have to be working together. That's the key of this is collaboration. And so we're gonna put you in breakouts in every session, you'll get to be in a breakout with at least four to five, or with four to five other people. And we'll have some attrition. So our goal is to never have you be alone. Um, and so that's gonna be a key opportunity for you to work together, generate questions, make commitments. I think, I, oh, I have one more thing to say. The last thing is that we have a code of ethics um, and Kelsa is gonna drop that in the chat and a link. Um, the code of ethics is for us to lead with empathy, to get comfortable with discomfort, value diverse perspectives, stay judgment-free, maintain confidentiality and note that applies to the breakout rooms not to the plenary anything kim and i and other people who are starred say please share we want you to share but in the breakouts we want you to hold confidentiality advocate for your emotional well-being move up move back and practice radical inclusion so i want to ask each of you right now think about which of these you want to put as your focus today it asks you to uphold all of them but i for example i'm going to work on getting comfortable with discomfort I expect we're gonna get pushed today by the people who speak, we'll be pushed to act, pushed to think more radically. And I'm expecting that's gonna make me uncomfortable. So my commitment is to get comfortable with this comfort. So please, each of you just take a moment and put into the chat, which of these do you wanna focus on today? All right. Thank you all so much. Um, so what we want to do next is actually ground ourselves in space, in place. Um, so we're going to do a land acknowledgement. Um, and we have with us Michelle. Um, thank you, Devin. Michelle Reed, uh, who's the community engagement and activation lead for US. Be Live US in Canada based in Vancouver. Uh, and so we're going to ask Michelle to lead us through a land acknowledgement 
if the land where she is is uh, permitting her internet to let her do that. So let's just <laughs> check in and see if Michelle is with us. Um, and then we'll go if she is. And if not, I have uh, something else we could do. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay. Hi, Justin. Can you hear me? I can hear you beautifully. Okay. Unfortunately, you all won't be able to see me, but um, I'll right, fix well, that after. Why don't we just leave your slide up and so we can see your face and we'll hear your voice. <laughs> Sounds great. Before we begin, we'd like to take a few moments to acknowledge that every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from and around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought to a place against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived in place for more generations than can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this event by acknowledging and honoring the truth. As I come to you today from the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Sable-Tooth Nations, we must also acknowledge what has been lost. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have been living without the Indian Act and were free from constraints. They held their land in accordance with their own traditions and observed their own laws that encouraged them to be wise, humble, respectful, truthful, brave, loving, and honest in their dealings with each other. I ask that we hold in our thoughts the lives of the 966 innocent children and the generational impacts that the Canadian residential school system continues to have on our Indigenous populations. It is important that we as business leaders and individuals commit to seeing all of the 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission come to fruition. Please take a moment to consider the tribulations behind our triumphant stories, including violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events in the future particularly through critical reflection and conversations within your own community. We invite you now to consider the land on which you live and the confluence of the legacies that brought you to be where you are. I invite you to share in the chat the land and ancestral lands from which you're calling into this webinar and acknowledge the First Nation people of these lands. If you're unsure of what ancestral lands you're on, you can find this at It seems like we lost Michelle's audio. So I think I can finish the sentence. You should find that in the links that are in the chat. And so please, if you would take a moment and put into the chat the ancestral lands from which you're calling. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I'm calling in from uh, Boston, from the Wampanoag land, and I wanna um, appreciate this place as we get started. And I also wanna thank Michelle for that uh, land acknowledgement that was both filled with gratitude, but also sobering in the realities of, uh, and accountability. So thank you so much, Michelle. All right. So um, next we wanna do a little bit of grounding uh, because we're gonna do a lot of um, head work today. We're going to do a lot of thinking about things we could do and getting really technical about what's the best move for climate injustice. So I want to give us a chance just to ground in ourselves, our bodies, the natural world before we dive into uh, the rest of the program. Um, and so to do that, I would like to invite uh, Lindsay to join us. Um, Lindsay Wilson is the business development manager at BLAB US in Canada, uh, based in Denver. And Lindsay's going to walk us through um, a few minutes of just grounding and centering. And so, uh, Lindsay, I think we should just let us have your face, probably. And so Kim and I will disappear, as will the slide. And if everyone wants to just sit comfortably, and um, please, Lindsay, take it away. Thank you, Justin. Um, so if everyone wants to just begin by finding a comfortable position sitting, 
or lying down if you wish. Um, feel free to turn off your camera if you'd like um, and close your eyes. Allow your body to relax as you start to create a picture in your mind. Imagine yourself walking on a path through a forest. The path is soft beneath your feet, a mixture of soil, fallen leaves, pine needles, and moss. Breathe in the fresh mountain air, filling your lungs completely. Now exhale and breathe out all the air. Take another deep breath in, revitalizing, and breathe out completely, letting your body relax further. Continue to breathe slowly and deeply as you walk through the forest. The air is cool but comfortable. Sun filters through the trees, making a moving dappled pattern on the ground before you. Listen to the sounds of the forest. Birds singing, a gentle breeze blowing, the leaves on the trees shift and sway in the soft wind. Your body relaxes more and more as you walk. Count your steps and breathe in unison with your strides. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, four, five. Continue to breathe like this, slowly and deeply. As you walk through the forest, feel your muscles relaxing and lengthening. As your arms swing in rhythm with your walking, they become loose and limp. Feel your back relaxing as your spine lengthens. Your legs and lower body relax as well, feeling free. Feel the tension leaving your body as you admire the scenery around you. As you continue to walk through the forest, you notice you are walking up a slight incline. You easily tread along on the path, feeling at one with nature. The breeze continues to blow through the treetops, but you are sheltered on the path and the air around you is calm. Around you is an immense array of green, some of the leaves on the trees are a delicate light green. Some leaves are a deep, dark, true forest green. Many trees have needles that look very soft and very green. The forest is thick green moss. There are a variety of trees around you. Some have smooth white bark. Others are darker with coarse, heavy bark, deeply grooved. Enjoy the colors of the bark on the trees, white, tan, brown, red, many combinations of color. You admire the rough brown bark of pine trees and enjoy the fresh pine scent. Smell the forest. The air is fresh and filled with the scent of soil and mountain streams. You can hear the sound of water faintly in the distance, the gentle burbling of a creek. As you near the top of the mountain, you hear the stream very close now. The path curves up ahead. You can see sunlight streaming onto the path. As you round the corner, you hear the water and see, clearing, see a clearing in the trees up ahead. A beautiful lookout point awaits. You are growing tired from your journey, your body pleasantly heavy. You walk toward the clearing and the stream Stepping stones make an easy path across the water and toward the edge of the mountain. Step on each flat stone to easily cross the small, shallow stream. Up ahead is a large rock, like a chair waiting for you to rest. The rock is placed perfectly high up on this beautiful vantage point. Sit or lie down on the rock if you wish. You feel very comfortable and at ease. The sun shines down on you. Looking around, you see mountains in the distance, faint and blue. You can look down from your vantage point into a valley with trees and a brilliant blue lake. Across from you is another mountain. The grass and mountain wildflowers around you blow gently in the breeze. 
a deer quietly emerges from the edge of the forest to graze in the clearing. As the deer raises its head to look at you, you can see its nostrils moving to catch your scent. The deer cautiously walks to the stream to drink before disappearing back into the forest. Feel the sun warming your body as you relax on the rock. Your body is very warm and very heavy. Continue to breathe the fresh air. You feel relaxed, calm, at peace, in unity with nature around you. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and smells of the forest. Feel the sun warm on your skin. Feel the gentle breeze blow across your cheek. Listen to the birds singing. Hear the stream flowing, the leaves rustling in the breeze. See the flowers, trees, valley, and mountains around you. Enjoy this ever peaceful place. When you are ready to leave this peaceful place, slowly begin to reawaken your body. Know that you can return to this forest whenever you like. As you reawaken, keep with you the feeling of calm, peace, relaxation, and connection. Wiggle your fingers and toes to wake up your muscles. Shrug your shoulders. Stretch if you want to. And when you are ready, open your eyes and return to full wakefulness, feeling alert and refreshed. Thank you so much. Oh, all right. So with that grounding, we now want to put you into groups to have a chance to meet your fellow participants and uh, just get to know each other at first. Um, and then this will be the team, the same team that you work with throughout the whole gathering to have the chance to reflect on the climate justice conversation and then to make commitments uh, together. So Elizabeth's going to open up the breakout room uh, and we want to give you two questions to reflect on, which is first just if you'd introduce yourselves. Um, and then the second question is uh, it would be great if you would talk about what it is that brought you to this summit and what you're hoping to get out of it. So you'll have about 10 minutes. Please make sure everyone has a chance to speak and we'll see you back here shortly. Welcome back. So um, we are so glad you had a chance to connect with some humans. These fellow humans are gonna be your trail buddies for today. And so we're now gonna share some context. Um, I think we have a couple people we held in the waiting room until those groups ended. Can you let them in? All right, does I wanna say something to them? Awesome. Okay, so to those of you who just arrived, welcome. We were in breakout rooms, so we just waited because it would have been dead air time for you but you're just in time for the, for the context setting. So we're gonna hear from a set of people who have been part of the B Corp Climate Collective work uh, in the US and Canada over the last several years to give us some context. So first, we're gonna hear from Andy and Deanna, who are gonna share with us the gathering in Taos 2019, what happened there when climate leaders came together to think about what collective action for B Corps would look like, and a little bit of the origin story of this work. Then, we're going to hear from Dr. Alonda Williams and Darcy Shiver Knowles, who are going to talk about the work that happened. Uh, Deanna and um, Andy will talk about the work that happened between 2019 and 2020. And then uh, Alonda and Darcy will pick up at 2020 and how that work led us to realize that we had to really center climate justice in all of this work. Justice had to be at the center of all climate work. So from there then, Raj will take over and we'll talk about what happened as a consequence of that gathering. How have we started the learning journey around centering people and justice in all of our climate action? 
Um, and finally, Mari is going to set the context for how this work that we have been doing together as a community has started to influence B Labs thinking and strategy and how B Labs thinking and strategy influences this. So looking at that interconnection of the US Canada theory of change and climate justice. Um, and then after that, I'll give us some closing thoughts before we take a break to then come back to have a, a conversation live with a set of brilliant climate justice leaders. So with that, we can take down the slides and I wanna pass it over to Andy and Deanna who are gonna give us uh, that first context of how did this all begin? All right, thanks, Justin. Uh, and good morning to the folks on the West Coast. Hi, Sylvia, and early evening to Charlotte and others across the pond. Uh, I'm Andy Fife, and I'm with B Lab US Canada. Happy to uh, speak a little bit with my friend Deanna here from Dino in North America to speak on a little bit of like the origin story of this work, this group, as it continues to evolve, and at least the place of where it first uh, was seated. And so I don't know if the folks in Tuskegee Valley are on the call, um, but deep gratitude to uh, David and Don and Kayla and Craig and all those souls and humans in the land of which we were. Uh, it was a pretty special opportunity. And so a little quick history, uh, and this won't be great news for B-Lab staff, uh, is because they offered to say, hey, we would love to host uh, the B-Lab team at Tuskegee Valley. Uh, and I said, hey, that's awesome. And we would love to do is to, <laughs> now we're back. What, uh, what we would love to do is to bring uh, B Corps together. Uh, and so in 2018, uh, we invited a bunch of CEOs uh, from B Corps uh, to come together and to start thinking about uh, what can we do together that we can't do alone? And obviously that's a pretty broad topic um, that's very ingrained in the Declaration of Interdependence that you all signed. Uh, and then in 2019, uh, thanks to Jay and Cohen Gilbert and Justin Wright and Kim uh, Coupon us here uh, is that we realize that we need to narrow in that focus on climate. We need to have a pillar of focus that we can bring in the certified B Corps and other partners and other voices to really focus on what can B Corps do who are really focusing on environmental uh, commitments? What can they do together that they can't do alone themselves? Um, and so as we continue to pivot and we call ourselves B Lab because we're an experiment, uh, is that we needed to also listen to the voices of saying, hey, we can't be talking about climate action unless we really center justice and equity and just transitions uh, in this work. And so a lot of those voices are here today. A lot of them uh, are not on this gathering, uh, but gratitude to those perspectives and for them to be speaking up uh, for the direction of what this gathering uh, needs to lead towards. And so it's not just about who are the missing uh, voices in that room of when we were in Towski Valley, um, but how do we also empower the voices that were in the room uh, with more proximity to the devastating effects of what we talk about, or maybe what we fill out spreadsheets you know, on in our day to day. And so though we've tried, um, our gatherings have not always been safe spaces at Towski Valley. They've been brave, um, but I will not say that they've always been safe um, for everybody who took the time to join us. And so as we grew more focused uh, in what we came to do and more honest with the questions that we wanted to approach, uh, there was certainly deeper work um, that we were all responsible for, you know, beyond the conversation. And so as uh, Raj, our buddy here, uh, brought up in State of the Bee and brought up yesterday, is that when we started to think about climate justice, uh, is that we realized that as a community, uh, we have a lot to learn to understand uh, what that actually means. Uh, and the climate justice playbook was an iteration uh, of what that could be. And so a few things of what we learned and one thing that I carry uh, with myself and my work and I think others here, and then I'll pass it over to Deanna. Uh, one is that we learned that the only way to solve uh, climate change is to center the frontline communities uh, most affected, to listen to their wisdom within those communities and to work with them to create a sustainable future. Uh, Dr. Tiffany Jana reminds us that we can't solve every issue that we're passionate about, but you can find a way to support those who are working 24 seven around the clock. What we delivered is that we put together a climate justice playbook. There are a bunch of action groups within the B Corp Climate Collective who you'll be hearing about uh, today. And what I continue to remind myself and big credit to folks like Deanna and Darcy who you'll be hearing from soon, Rob Mahalik from Ben and Jerry's, 
is that this work only moves at the pace of trust and relationships. And dare I say, and you will hear later, at the pace of love. Uh, and so a lot of the gifts uh, from the times at Towski Valley are from the perspectives, the experts, and the storytellers of those who we're joined by, whether they be representing the Pueblo community, which is in direct proximity and relationship and original land to where Towski Valley is, uh, or artists, musicians, nonprofits, athletes. Uh, it was really broadening this widening table of folks to really uh, put us in check and, and ask the questions uh, that maybe we skip uh, ourselves. And so I just appreciate everybody here. Um, and my challenge here, um, again, in the words of Dr. Tiffany Jana from TMI Consulting, longtime B Corp, is that we need to get proximate to the issue so that we can make it personal. And you gotta feel it if you wanna do something about it. And so I hope within this work, we can personalize it, bring up real examples of how this affects in our life, those aha moments of when climate justice clicked for you uh, so that we can really make this more accessible and for people like myself uh, to learn and to be able to ask very silly questions. Um, so I'll pass over to Deanna to, to speak a little bit more as someone who's dedicated much more time and work to this and especially from a, a B Corp perspective herself. Um, thank you, Andy. Well said, for sure. And your leadership, um, you know, in bringing us together and helping set and create intention for this work is, is greatly appreciated. Um, so I just want to share a couple thoughts with everyone from the perspective of a business uh, as an employee of a business who supports this work uh, and is proud to sponsor and be part of the Climate Collective for the last several years. Um, you know, Climate action is hard work. Anyone who is in this space knows it. Um, it's incredibly important work, but it's hard. Uh, the nature of long-term system change and influencing other leaders in the business, other people who may or may not be as far along in their journey can be daunting. And when we look both at the scale of the problem or the challenges ahead um, and the weight of the work towards solutions, um, it's a lot. And one of the gifts of this climate collective and the bringing together of people in beautiful Taos, New Mexico was um, getting out of the office, getting into that forest, getting into that nature to learn, to grow and to challenge, but to give ourselves space to really shed some of the weight of the challenge and bring together community and remind ourselves that we are not individuals in companies or alone trying to create these massive systems changes, um, but that there is a community across the B Lab world, across the B Corp um, community and across the climate collective of people who share those same convictions to manifest positive change um, in ourselves and in our businesses. Um, and what the um, gathering provided was this opportunity to recharge and to reimagine how we're gonna take on this work, how we're gonna take on this collective work of climate action uh, for business big and small. Um, and for me personally, the challenges, the discussions, the insights, the learning, the speakers um, created sparks and really shifted me personally profoundly every time I walked away, really um, taking something new to not just reflect on the why I do this work, um, but how I'm going to do it and really reimagining that into a more inclusive approach. Um, and you'll hear more about that as we continue to shift the work from um, action uh, into justice. And so this collective, we went deep. We went deep into climate action, to solutions, to working groups, tools, ideas, advocacy, experiments. Um, and we really found ourselves confronted many times with the need to shift and shift again to balance the thinking work with the heart work um, and connect climate action vision with climate justice reality to design forward. And that was the way it was going to take. So you're going to continue to hear about this transformation um, from others. But this is the work of the B community and the Climate Collective to redefine success in business, to enable climate justice through action um, as a community, and um, to create a collective of change agents who are heading um, together in the same direction toward climate justice. Um, so with that, I would love to turn it over to Dr. Alonda Williams of B Lab and Darcy Schreiber Knowles of Dr. Bronner's who are gonna share more about the journey toward centering climate justice through the work of the Climate Collect Collective. Thanks. Thank you, Deanna and Andy for that 
context. And um, I'm so grateful to be here with all of you and to be sharing the screen with the amazing Dr. Alanta Williams. Uh, so the B Corp Climate Collective was born around the same time as two other collective action uh, uprisings and communities within the B Corp movement. The Dismantle Collective, founded to dismantle white supremacy, and We the Change, founded to elevate women's leadership. And shout out to those incredible businesses, business leaders that um, created that work together, and that work continues. So in 2019-2020, coming out of the Taos events Andy and Deanna mentioned, several of us in the Climate Collective were wrestling with how do we build on the incredible collective climate work we had done in these working groups and at these events, and how do we balance that with this critical social justice work that was happening? How do we reconcile our sense of urgency with the climate crisis with these other urgent needs in our world? What do we do? Do we need to stop everything and talk about racism and sexism in business before we get to climate action? How do we make sense of all of this? So, um, we added a dismantling white supremacy culture training to our Taos 2020 event that Alanda and um, uh, that Alanda co-led for us, and we uh, added climate justice to our agenda and arrived in Taos to talk about three buckets of work: climate action, climate policy, and climate justice. So there we are. Um, in a slightly more diverse, slightly more inclusive event than in years past. And we're talking about actions like measuring emissions and the best strategies to get to net zero. And we're talking about climate policy advocacy that will advance renewable power and regenerative organic agriculture. And then as we started talking about climate justice, and as the lessons from the dismantling white supremacy training started to sink in, we had this collective aha as a group that as well-intentioned and, and inspiring uh, and good as the work had, had been and is in climate action and climate policy, if that work was not rooted in justice and advancing justice, then we were not going to achieve what we were there to do and what we're here to do today too in terms of stabilizing the climate. And, and why is that? That's because the climate crisis is a symptom of, a function of, an expression of injustice. So then we remembered, why do we do this work? Why are we here? And we do it, cheesy as it may be, out of love love for our businesses, love for each other, love for our children and grandchildren, for uh, beautiful plants and animals, for miraculous ecosystems and our incredible planet as a whole. And when we love something and we see injustice hurting it, we, we, we gather courage, we come together and we fight. And so with that energy and intention and truth, we refocused and said, climate justice needs to be at the center of our action and policy work. And then we had another aha that, okay, so we've got some um, serious unlearning to do, many of us, and some major learning journeys to begin or continue, many of us. So Deanna mentioned these working groups that we had, um, we've been collaborating in between these incredible events that B-Lab was hosting for B Corps. And we said, okay, we need another working group focused specifically on climate justice learning. And that working group, uh, the Climate Justice Learning Task Force um, was uh, led by Alanda and, Raj Agarwal of Provoke. So I will hand it to Alanda to continue the story. Yeah, Dorothy, thank you so much. You know what I have, there are two people that stick out to me from, for me personally, from Taos. 
um, because of my interaction with them and Darcy is one of them. So like Darcy tattooed my heart that day and I think of you very fondly. Um, she's right, right? So we got to tell us we were feeling really great about ourselves and we did some really intentional work and we were ready to like talk about climate justice. Um, and I experienced several microaggressions in that <laughs> throughout that event, along with several of my other people of color uh, guests that we, we had invited. Um, and we realized that intent and impact, as Darcy mentioned, are two completely separate things. And while we were well intended, we still were falling short in creating a space that not only welcomed everyone, excuse my phone, but welcomed everyone, but made everyone feel as though that they were valued and important. And that that lack of experience and expertise that existed in such a homogeneous space sometimes created more harm than it did healing. And we realized that education was necessary and it needed to be put at the forefront. So then we created the Climate Justice Learning Task Force, which was, we were like, we're gonna commit to really educating ourselves and educating these groups to really understand um, why sometimes our intentions don't match our impact. Um, and we were really excited to do that work. And I, as a, as a, as, as a member of B-Lab, the staff member at B-Lab, um, I had a lot going on. And I think it's important for leaders to be able to admit when they've made a mistake, admit whenever um, they've overstepped, but more importantly, just admit when they need some help. And that's where the next person comes in line that I wanna kind of mention. Um, I believe that your best leaders are those that are willing to seek help from those with the experience and the expertise necessary to kind of continue the fight. And therefore Raj, my friend Raj Agarwal was one of the warmest presents that I've ever experienced walking into B-Lab. Um, and I was very excited to be passing off. Um, he happily raised his hand to continue on the fight for educating the Climate Collective on climate justice to better understand why there's an intersection and why those two things really need to be one conversation. And that's a lot about what the panel is going to be talking about in just a few short moments. But Raj is the president of Provoke, a certified B Corp, co-founder of the B Corp Climate Collective um, and chair of the Climate Justice Learning Task Force. And he picked up the charge when I could could go no further. And so I would like to pass it off over to Raj to hear a little bit more about the collective and the work that they did with um, embarking upon the climate uh, collective task force and uh, our playbook that later came about. Uh, thank you, Alanda. Um, I wouldn't have even attempted to try to lead that work if you hadn't stepped in first. Um, and so it was your leadership that inspired me to do the work that I did. Um, so. It was really, you know, thanks to our dear colleagues, Alanda Williams and Venice Dunn, uh, we realized that as summit attendees that were predominantly white privileged community that we were ill-equipped to close the enormous gaps between their good intentions and their lack of climate justice awareness and practice. So um, as both Darcy, Alanda, Deanna and Andy have brought us to, um, we set out to inform um, a collective learning journey by doing a landscape analysis, which is formulated in this thing called the Climate Justice Playbook. And so I'm also just really heartened to hear Andy, and Deanna, and Darcy, and Alanda speak, because we haven't spoken together about what we're going to speak about. Um, but the thread is just so clear. And the fact that we're just really all on the same page. And I just want you to know how heartwarming that is for me to be with friends uh, in this work and to know that we all have um, a similar understanding of where we are, uh, where we've been, and where we are, and hopefully where we're going. So as a part of this work, we set out to learn what does climate justice mean to us? How do we see it in action? And more importantly, what do we not know? And so from this inquiry, we worked in coalition with amazing partners, including the COP26 Climate Champions team, uh, my company Provoke, and the Skoll Center for Social Entrepreneurship at the University of Oxford. We developed a powerful on-ramp tool called the Climate Justice Playbook for Business, that features insights and case studies from over 40 certified B corporations and the communities and humans that impact. And so I think this is really powerful because we did that as a collective. We're really building on B-Lab's theory of change, that this work is driven by the community, for the community to further our collective impact. And what we can do together is super powerful. Um, the playbook, if you don't know about it or haven't heard much about it, will help you to understand that the climate emergency is a justice emergency. 
It will help you link everything you're doing in addressing the climate emergency to human rights, taking a human-centered approach and placing people and equity at the core. The playbook shows how all businesses of any shape and size can advance climate action rooted in climate justice. And they share all these B Corps that we were able to interview and survey uh, globally are able to share a real challenge, a real range of their challenges in this work and the steps they have taken on the journey from how they work with their suppliers and other businesses with similar supply chains and how to engage their employees or how to speak about these ideas with their customers. We think the Climate Justice Playbook feels unique because it's focused on sharing these examples from businesses who are most likely to be in similar positions as you. We hope it can really be relatable and helpful. And so I just wanna to touch on a few key themes which really speak to also what we heard about um, from Deanna and Darcy and Andy. Um, and Landa is about the personal work that's required, the mindset shift that we're asking people to take and the important questions to keep on referring to. So when it comes to mindset shift, you know, and to truly center climate action and climate justice, it requires us to think about rethink about the approaches that we've taken. And the way that we've best uh, described those changes is to go from extracted, extractive to regenerative and have our work informed by the communities that are most impacted. And sometimes we've found in climate work, it's really tempting to take a one size fits all approach to climate action and to pursue activities in a way that focuses on deadlines and KPIs and expects this work to be linear. I don't know about you all, but uh, with Deanna said, she says climate work is really hard. I doubt she's ever seen it as linear. Uh, and we've been seeing the same thing for over 50 years. Um, so in pursuing climate justice, it encourages us to take a different approach, one that values multidimensional thinking, deep listening, and is nonlinear, and instead focuses on learning and progress. So that's what I think really heartens me about this conversation is that we made an intention last February, and I feel like we're making real progress uh, as a community to do this. So this work is really personal and it requires deep personal work. I am most influenced recently by Julie Nelson at Race Forward, uh, someone I get to work with, that reminded me all equity related work is about changing decision making and not just decisions themselves. One must do much internal work that is not about checking boxes, but it's about transforming ourselves to think differently. If you're wondering what that means, you're not alone, and here are some practices to consider as climate change and climate injustice are inherently stress-reducing. I mean, sorry, stress-inducing. <laughs> I wish it was stress-reducing. Um, the daily practice of cultivating a calm, centered state of consciousness can greatly improve our ability to respond to ourselves and others with kindness, compassion, and wisdom, and to see possibilities and solutions, and ultimately to enable us to gr contribute greatly to our own healing and to healing our troubled world. And we also say that the playbook raises more questions and provides answers. Funny thing for a thing called a playbook. Um, but we wanted to really have people ask themselves regularly, who bears the cost of climate change and ensuring that, that you keep on asking this in all of your operations and your touch points and who, and who is bearing the cost of climate change here. Um, also thinking about how your organization is advancing climate change and uh, continuing to ask yourself these questions on a regular basis. So we know that this is version one and there's more work to do and we'll be doing that together. And we also just wanna say in writing the playbook ourselves, we fell into a lot of traps ourselves. Um, a lot of the folks that we interviewed were sustainability folks that were primarily white and we had to retroactively fit in uh, the people that were leading their work in their communities that were in partnership with B Corps. And so that you've been hearing from some of those folks uh, that. Don, uh, that Dan and Alanda have pulled together for, for, uh, for sharing their wisdom. So what's next? Uh, so to keep pursuing this climate justice work, we want to offer a year long learning journey for businesses serious about ensuring their actions are rooted in climate justice. This would center expertise from climate justice leaders and use peer support between participating companies to support businesses and to get unstuck and uh, really sticking in uh, grounding their climate action into climate justice. And we'll share more about this later. And so this work needs partners. In order to design this learning journey and further this work, we're exploring forming a business for a just and equitable climate coalition with the University of California, our partners at Oxford, Climate Collaborative and Ceres, and many other uh, racial justice and civil rights organizations. So if you want to work with other businesses and organizations committed to climate justice, just let us know. 
And we know that we need academics, activists, curriculum writers, business, businesses, and really importantly, funders uh, to join us on this journey. And if you'd like to get involved, please let us know. You can register your interest and take part in the year long learning journey. And hopefully somebody's gonna paste the uh, link, but otherwise I will do that. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, me. Where's next? Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much.